One of the most beautiful praying mantis species in the world and one of my personal favorites to keep is the spiny flower mantis. I absolutely love spiny flower mantises. As I said, they're one of my favorites to keep. And this guy just had his final molt, which means he is now an adult, which means that it's time to make him a new home. Now, the first thing we need to do to make a good home for this little guy is uh, go to the garage. Oh, well that was a long trip, but anyways, we're here in the garage. So as usual when I'm doing mantis enclosures, the first thing we need to do is take a look at the enclosure. So here's the enclosure that I'm using. It's again, the exact same one that I had for the Darth Vader mantis and the dead leaf mantis, except this time it's even smaller. Aww. Spiny flower mantises as adults reach a max size of about 1.75 inches. Males are even smaller, which is what I have. So this tiny little cute buggy box will work quite well. Now, with the enclosure out of the way, the first thing we need to do is make the background. So let's make the background. As usual when making a background, I start with the tank and getting some of the inside measurements of it, then using a sheet of XPS foam and various other tools, I transfer those measurements onto the sheet of XPS foam and then carve it with a razor blade. Then before continuing, I do a little test fit just to make sure that everything's good. With everything fitting, I start to draw on my pattern, which in this case is a little rocky formation. There's no real pattern to this. I just kind of like the look of rocks kind of overlapping each other. But once I have the pattern drawn on, I get a few other pieces of foam of various thicknesses and basically copy the patterns onto it, then cut it out. Then I repeat this process until I have a cutout of every piece on the background. Then I use a little bit of hot glue to glue them in place. Once all the pieces are glued in place, I use my wire brush drill bit to not only help add texture, but to also just shape the foam a bit better and make it look good. Okay, so we have the background to this point, and honestly, uh, that could have gone better, but it also could have gone worse. Overall, because it's gonna be such a small tank, this background should be good, so this next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over it with the heat gun like I do usually and then again since this one's going to be a rock background I'm going to go over it with a little bit of sun papier and that will help just you know give it a little more shape and color and texture and all the stuff and then uh, we can move on to painting using white tintable dry lock as well as concrete pigments for color I start with a tiny container that I then pour some dry lock in then I mix up some of the charcoal pigments to get a dark color I then paint this over the background in a thick coat making sure to get in all of the little nooks and crannies then I repeat the process, lightly brushing different colors over it, hitting all of the high points. Okay, so now our little background is finished, and just look at it, it's so cute, oh my god! So, now that the background's finished, uh, we'll get this in the tank real quick, and then uh, it's time to go back downstairs and work on the rest. Okay, so now that we have our little buggy box and our little buggy background done, it's time to make a buggy false bottom. In order to make a buggy false bottom, I start by putting a few cups of buggy Lika in and then getting some buggy mesh. I set the buggy tank on top of it and cut it with some buggy scissors. Then I put the buggy mesh back in the tank and we're buggy done. Now that the false bottom's in place, it's time to move on to the substrate. Now the substrate that I'm using for this enclosure, I have already pre-mixed, but it's basically the same substrate that I've used for like my past four videos. It's just three part cocoa fiber, two part reptile bark, one part sand, and one part charcoal. So now that you know how the, so now that you know about the substrate, let us put it in the tank. Since this is a small tank, I only need a few cups, but I like to slope it towards the back just to help give it a little bit of depth. And with the substrate in place, the next thing we need to do is the hardscape. Now, as I mentioned in previous videos, it's important to have a lot of little branches coming out and areas where mantises can hang upside down just to make sure that they have successful molds. Anything that's, you know, like kind of harder and more dense, really, that doesn't have a lot of, that doesn't have a lot of like upside down surface area is not going to be ideal for your mantis versus something that's got a lot of these little branches and just plenty of areas where they can hang upside down is important. But since my praying mantis is now an adult, that means that I don't have to worry about this because once mantises reach adult, they completely stop molting. Still, I'm going to pick something with a few branches just because I feel like it looks better. Also, instead of using a solid piece of wood, I have a few little pieces of tiger wood that I'll glue together to make a cool scape. I love making my scapes out of smaller pieces of wood and just combining different things because it really just gives me the creative freedom to really get what I want and create my perfect vision. Okay, so our scape is finished. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Obviously, it's not, you know, super crazy because it's a small tank. I mean, it's barely the size of my hand. 
But all in all, I think the hardscape turned out pretty good. So with the hardscape out of the way, uh, it's time to move on to the next step. And the next step would be prepping the plants. Now, same with driftwood when it comes to plants for mantis enclosures, it's a very important topic. Mantises are super, super sensitive to pesticides and it can end up killing them. So making sure that your plants are prepped adequately is very important. Now, like I've done in the past, my process for prepping these plants and making sure to get off as much of those pesticides as I can is I start by removing the plants from their pots, then breaking up as much of the soil from the roots as I can, then I take them outside or to the sink, wash it off even further, rub the leaves, just make sure to get as much of it, that substrate off as I can, but as well as just cleaning the leaves and stems. Then just to further ensure that I don't have any issues, I soak the plants for about 10 to 15 minutes with warm dechlorinated water. So now that the plants are all prepped, uh, it's time to finish this thing up. So I'm gonna add the plants and then I'll add stuff like maybe a few botanicals, leaf litter, all the little uh, doodads that make it good. So let's make it good. Hey there! Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really love the way this one turned out. It's a smaller tank, so it was kind of hard to kind of get that balance with, you know, the plants and the wood and all that. But overall, I'm happy with how it turned out. I didn't put the spiny flower mantis in yet. I'm gonna wait about a week, same as I did for the Darth Vader mantis, just to be sure. In the meantime, I'm gonna check parameters, do any final adjustments I want, all that good stuff. But that's going to do it for this week. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button and smash that subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video.